older birth certificates don't, but I'm 41 years old. Obamas I, don't have anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Obamas doesn't have anything. That's right, it doesn't. Um, his, never mind, I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> the, the, uh, but next to my mom's signature, it says informer. Now, you get your Social Security card, and that's just a whole nether Pandora's box, which I don't want to open that. That card is a, a, is, a, is a couple of hours of discussion. But here's the big one, your driver's license. In the state of California, the driver's license on the back of the application, it says, I agree I'm in the United States under federal jurisdiction. So when you sign on the front of the application for your driver's license, you're saying, I agree I am under a corporation in the District of Columbia. If you look at those words in the, in the dictionary, United States, remember, under Title 28, it says it's a federal corporation, of which its exclusive jurisdiction is in the District of Columbia. So you are con constantly, through adhesion contracts, by consent, submitting yourself, your straw man, your all-capital letter name, your driver's license, your birth certificate, they're all in all capital letter names. You're indentured slaves, and you could talk about the all capital letter name, and that's a whole nother show by itself, and that would be a couple of hours of discussion because there's a lot of law that I could show to prove absolutely that's what they do. And that's what I love is the fact that you can back all this up. You know, we've been trying to tell people how crooked things are, and there's still a lot, and a lot. If you've ever watched TV when they said bin Laden was caught, you can see there's a lot of people who are still not catching on. And, and cover the, because uh, this is really interesting to me, I've seen a, a video on it before as well, but cover the fact that your birth certificate has a stock almost like a number associated with it and what that means yeah. and how people have found the value of that stock and so forth. Yeah. Um, well, the only thing that our government has that's of any value is its people. So what this country did was made its people chattel. And the number one department in charge of the people is the Department of Agriculture. So you are literally stock. You are literally collateral. You're 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 the cattle. You're you're nothing more than a number. And you prove that by you, your mom informs, turns you over. Um, you they, they pre before that they said the product of the union belongs to the state. The state of California is a subcorporation to the United States Corporation. Hence. You literally are the corporate collateral. So what they do is, if you go down to the uh, public records office, um, the recorder's office, and you ask for a copy of your birth certificate, you're going to see that your birth certificate is on bonded note paper, and in the bottom left-hand corner or right corner, it says American Bank Note Paper or Pacific Bank Corp Paper. Now, why the heck are they printing our birth certificates on bonded note paper because bonded note paper is used for basically a security instrument, period. All those birth certificates are stacked in packs of about $100 million. Um, I'm guessing it on a number. They just put a lot of them together, and they literally wrap them, package them, and put a QCIP number to them, and they trade them on Wall Street just like any other commodity. I see. Yeah. Gentlemen, we're coming up on a break, so hold that thought, and let's get right back to it as soon as we come back. Uh, I'm Michael Vera. This is Late Night in the Midlands. With me is Glenn Kennedy and Kelby Thomas-Smith. Uh, Kelby Thomas-Smith is giving you some truth right now, so I hope you all appreciate it. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. We're back, and you can pick right back up where you were, uh, Kelby. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um if somebody wants wants to refresh my memory exactly where I left off, that'd be very helpful. Otherwise, I'll just pick up where I thought I was. Well, can you just talk, you know, just maybe a couple minutes about the straw man and how when people get their bills, it's in all capital letters and and their driver's yeah. license and how what that represents as far as you know the straw man and everything that might be helpful. Well, way back in the Roman Empire days, um, there's a term for it, and uh, um, basically they would refer to the all capital letter person as uh, a slave. And 
we picked that back up um, this century, uh, and and the corporation uses that uh, when they're referencing a what's called an allegiance trust. When you're born, a trust is is basically made, and when you go to court, when you when you're pulled over by a police officer, the first thing they say when they ask for your driver's license is they say, are you this person? Now, this is the most important thing. If I could say anything on your show tonight, aside from all the other stuff I've said, the most important thing is the words in everything, every contract, the words mean everything. The words. Let me give you a very important word. Person. Go look up the definition of person. One of the definitions of person is corporation. People just don't realize it. So when you stand before a judge and he's looking at his court document and it has an all-capital letter name, he says, are you Shelby Smith? Are you this person? And and you answer yes. You're basically submitting yourself to the jurisdiction of the court. We're admitting you, the real living man, and the trust are one. And now, therefore, you become under the jurisdiction of that court. Here's another big word, bar, B-A-R. Um, those doors in the courtroom, the bar, when you walk through the bar, one of the definitions of the word bar is jurisdiction. You literally, when you walk into that bar, are within the jurisdictional rights of the corporation. When you're outside of the bar, you're in what's called the utter of the court. The utter, you know, I, I walked into court several times and the judge says, please come in, uh, Kelby Thomas Smith, and and he says, "Are you Kelby? Are you Kelby Smith?" And um, I say, "Well, you're, I, I say one of two things. I'll say, you know, I'll be more than happy to enter the bar if I can retain all my rights.' And if he says, "Sure," then I absolutely retain my rights. I'll go in and I'll I'll speak at the podium. If I'm, if he says no or has any problem with that, um, or if he's being a jerk, you know, sometimes I'll I, I won't even try to enter the bar because I don't know what level of uh, usurping my rights he's going to do. So I'll stay outside the bar, which is outside of his jurisdiction, and I'll say to him, I'll be more than happy. Um, my name is Kelby. I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, I'm appearing as Kelby Smith, and I, I, I'll speak from the utter of the court. And I'll say, he'll say, I won't hear your case unless you come up to the microphone. And what he's really saying is I can't hear you, but he converts that and tries to threaten you with that by saying I will not be able to hear your case unless you come into the, uh, and speak at the microphone, I'll say, and I'll simply respond with something nice. That's not a problem, uh, sir. I'll be more than happy to speak up right from the utter of the court. Uh, is, and, and we go back and forth. But the point is, is I keep from, A, admitting I am Kelby Smith on those court documents because I am not the only just trust. I'm the real living man. And I'll tell him that, and I'll ask him, do you have a charge against the real living man? And he'll immediately, they will not answer your questions. They'll do whatever they can to try to get you to adjudicate or traverse into their jurisdiction. It's absolute proof that there is a difference between the straw and the real living man. And if you don't, if you doubt that one minute, there's case after case after case on YouTube where you can watch people do what I just said in front of a court, and you'll watch the judge ultimately have to stand up and bow. <laughs> yeah, I've seen and that. Walk out of so the court. funny, because I don't like just, they always have that cocky attitude that they're better than everybody else, and they're not. So basically what they do is they work really hard to dumb down America, and then they use deception in the words to trick people into really submitting themselves as a piece of property to the government. What? What? Yes, and what's worse than that is those judges know. What I oh, just said. yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Judges know that every house that is appearing in that courtroom for foreclosure has already been prepaid based on the signature of the party that's appearing uh, to save their house. So when a person or a real living woman or a mother or a grandmother walks into that courtroom saying, please don't take my house, the judge does everything that he can to get them to traverse into the jurisdiction and do what's called recontract. So he'll say to the woman, well, you know, you haven't made your payments for a year. Yeah. And she'll say, yeah. And then he'll say, you know, I'm going to have to take your house. And she'll say, yeah, I know. 
She literally gives over the rights and title to her house because she doesn't know any better. And that wicked wizard that sits on the bench in a black robe, <laughs> dishonoring the world, Satan himself incarnated in a man, is stripping the ladies and the women and the families away from their rightful homes with their signatures prepaid. Every one of those banks, and I can prove this, I can prove it any day of the week, and this one's easy. Every one of those banks are prepaid on those loans within three days based on your birth bond because your signature is what creates the money, because there is no lawful money in this, in this country. Your signature is what creates the debt to offset the debt. And so that's why they don't file the notes into the recordings of, of your, when they record on your home, the note doesn't get filed, only the deed does. Why don't they file the note? It's because that note has a stamp on the back with the vice president's signature saying, please pay to the order of, and they start trading that note, receive funds on that note, and sometimes trade it six to ten times, and sometimes insure that note with six to ten different insurance companies in the event of a loss. I'm telling you, they're the most crooked banks are the most crooked in the entire world, and the judges support them because they work for them. The, the judge, the judge gets paid for doing what they do. Right. And don't they get a piece of the action, don't they, the little scumbags? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's absolutely worse than that. The judge is on the take, and I don't know what the, I think it's an 803 or 803B, or I forget what it's called, but their retirement fund is entirely based on the cases they win. <laughs> yeah, and in federal court, what, the, the federal government has a 98% conviction rate or something, and it's like, you know... They have all these jurors that, that run around to all the federal cases, these little patsies that the government gets them to, to basically steal from the people. I mean, this country is a joke. When did we go off this common law? That's what we need to get back to, these common law courts where a jury decides the case and nobody with a black robe you know, that thinks he's God has any say-so on it. Well, let me, let me prove de facto versus de jure. Let me prove to you that the corporation was formed in 1871, and, that, and the fact that the United States Supreme Court recognizes that and recognizes the word de jure and recognizes the word de facto, if you look at de facto, which is our present form of government, it's not by right, not by law. That's what it means. Only because they merely appear to be, therefore they have the, the masses thinking they are subjects to this corporation. In Shelby versus Norby, Shelby versus Norby, sometime in the mid 1800s, late 1800s, it flat out says, unless there is a de jure office in place, the de facto cannot operate. So, any time that you have a de facto decision, according to the United States Supreme Court in the mid 1800s, that means every case, every single case ever litigated that didn't have a de jure court in place to hear it, a de jure um, body in place to hear it, would mean that case was illegitimate. So in their own laws, in their own United States Supreme Court, Shelby versus Norby clearly talks about de facto versus de jure. Not only that, but in corpus juris secundum, it's a law, it's a, basically a law book. It says where the de jure grand jury exists, the facto must go away. So that goes back to what you were saying, which is what I want to get into now, which is who we are and what we've done. Tim Turner, my president, uh, basically was with a group of men um, about two years ago, and he founded um, a document. It was called the Declaration of something, something. I forget. It's been a while. And that document was served to the governors, and it was basically the people, uh, a group, a body of grand jurors across the country banded together and had over 1,500 or 2,000 signatures, I forget how many there were, and they served simultaneously 50, 50 governors. It hit CNN News. <laughs> um, That's a miracle. It was solid on CNN News every day for a week. Well, guess what they found out? 